Okay. Hi, everybody. We're just going to get started in just a couple of minutes. Okay, hi everybody. It is four o'clock um, and we are gonna get started. Um, thank you so much for taking the time today to join us. Um, my name is Jennifer Rosenberg. I'm one of the Associate Deans in the UB School of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences. I'm gonna let my colleagues introduce themselves as we move through our presentation. Welcome to our Academic Health Center um, webinar. Um, we're so excited to be with you today. We're excited to work together. We're excited to share all this information with you. Um, and again, super excited that you're taking the time um, and we appreciate it. We know you're busy, probably have a lot of Zooms, busy with all kinds of stuff. So thank you again for taking the time. This webinar is a follow-up to a webinar we held last week, um, a similar webinar for pre-health advisors. Um, so this is a series that we do, um, a two-part series, in addition to our own individual school webinars. This webinar in particular um, is really a marriage of the Academic Health Center at the University of Buffalo. Um, the University of Buffalo is an R1 AAU a major comprehensive public research institution. Um, and we have the you know, distinct benefit of having uh, many, many different health sciences schools that work together. So today we're gonna talk with you um, about that health center. We're also gonna present each of the schools to you. So that would be the School of Dental Medicine, our School of Medicine and Biomedical Sciences, our School of Nursing, our School of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences, our School of Public Health and Health Professions, our School of Social Work, and our Roswell Park Can Cancer Institute Graduate Division. So I just want to talk high level, um, a couple of benefits. Why is this a thing? Uh, why is this important? Why is this important for you? Um, we are very distinct. Um, so the University of Buffalo is one of only a few um, schools like the University of Buffalo that have really the full complement of health science schools available to prospective students and current students. Um, this has tremendous benefits to faculty um, collaboration, to student collaboration. We do something called interprofessional education, which I'm going to tell you about next. And you really learn in a very unique, um, forward-thinking, progressive, innovative environment that allows um, all of our students to really work together so that when you graduate, you are really part of a healthcare team. It's not training that you have to do on the job. You are fully prepared to work as a healthcare team. Uh, my final uh, slide before I hand it over to my colleague. Um, interprofessional education is a term that you may or may not be familiar with just yet, um, but I can't stress how um, important and frankly how exciting um, it is um, as to be a current student and to take advantage of something called interprofessional education. It basically is um, an amalgamation of all of our schools working together to train you um, in sort of a real setting so that you are working as a healthcare team to cure um, and help patients and help move people forward. And this is embedded within um, a number of our curriculums. Um, in particular, in the School of Pharmacy, um, interprofessional education is an accreditation requirement. Um, we actually um, just went through an accreditation process and we received a national commendation for the work that we are doing in the School of Pharmacy together with our partners in interprofessional education, which says that we are one of the best, if not the best school in the country doing this right now. 
Um, so that is really exciting for prospective students and for our current students. And the cool thing is, if you look at the little picture, it's not only just the health sciences schools. When we work together on those interprofessional days and on that work, we have um, partners come in from the law school, um, from occupational therapy, from um, management. So we're really looking at the patient um, as a whole um, and things that they might face and barriers and obstacles to be able to get them um, to a better place. So just high level about the Academic Health Center, I'm gonna hand it over to the School of Nursing and then we're gonna move forward into our presentation. And really to kind of build on that, you know, I think it's so essential that, you know, as you are entering um, this field that you really learn to work as a team. And I think that's a great thing about coming to UB because we have the Academic Health Center. So you have this opportunity to not only um, be in a uh, campus environment with students from a wide variety of backgrounds and disciplines, but we also intertwine that into our education. Uh, one example is our RAM, our Remote Area Medical Trip, which is a long-standing volunteer organization um, program that we've done where we've set up medical centers in underserved areas. We've recently gone to Tennessee, and in previous years we've gone to remote parts of Appalachia to really provide um, medical care to underserved areas. Um, this last trip to Tennessee, we worked with the UB School of Nursing, worked with the School of Dentistry to set up mobile clinics for underinsured and un, um, uninsured patients to get that care. And it was a great opportunity to one for our students in nursing to really know how to triage patients, but also to understand the importance of dental health in a, a patient's health. And so that was a great opportunity. And we really developed those opportunities in our students um, in, that, in that remote area medical trip. So that's just like one example where students can be involved in an opportunity to actually work with other healthcare disciplines um, within the School of Nursing and Dentistry. But we also have additional opportunities. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Beth White. I'm the Director of Graduate Enrollment in the Jacobs School of Medicine and Biomedical Sciences. So I'm going to cover the next few slides. Um, and to kind of piggyback on what Jennifer and Julie have already been talking about is our um, role in the community. UB, and in particular, I think the health sciences programs really take our role in the community really seriously. Um, in the medical school, our faculty members are also practicing physicians in the community. So they're seeing the health concerns um, that are affecting our community, and that informs the care that they provide and the training that they're giving to our students. Um, of course, our students are also working in lo local hospitals, and that's true for all of us as well, and clinics and so on. So, um, and, and that's a practice you'll see kind of across our various units. Um, in the dental school, they do a lot of outreach in the community and provide, um, again, care to underserved folks who might not otherwise receive dental care. Julie's already talked about the School of Nursing's commitment to serving um, rural communities. In the School of Medicine, we also have our street medicine team, which goes out and works with um, homeless folks who would not be getting medical care. And they go out on a regular basis and to provide basic health care and give people boots and blankets and the things that they're going to need to survive cold weather in Buffalo. Um, so all of this is really about our mission to, to help, right? And that's why people go into these various fields. Um, if anything, we all know as a result of what we've seen these past months with the pandemic um, and the racial justice things that themes that we've been seeing nationally, um, that it's really important that we're working together to address the inequities that we see in our healthcare system. Um, so that's something that we all take really seriously. And also, as an academic health center, it, it helps us receive funding that then informs new training modules, new treatments, um, new practices in healthcare. Um, UB was really fortunate probably about five years ago to receive a very prestigious grant from the National Institute, Institutes of Health. Uh, in trans translational medicine. Um, we were one of only 16 universities that received those awards that year, and we have had it renewed, I think, a couple of times since. Um, but it was really important, and we received that grant because of this Academic Health Center infrastructure that we already had in place. Um, you know, we already have a, the Buffalo Niagara Medical Campus, where the medical school is located and where a lot of the local hospitals are, particularly in the city of Buffalo now. Um, 
but we, we work with all of these partners in the community, even outside of the university, to make sure that we're creating sort of a seamless system for our, for our patients. Um, so that's a, an example of, of a way that that helps the community, but also how it helps students because these grants also can fund the training for students while they are here in our, our primarily our PhD programs. And I think now we're transitioning into, yeah, so this, this part of the presentation will be an opportunity for each one of us to talk about the things that make each of our programs unique. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the medical school. Um, the next slide will show you the, the variety of programs that we offer. Obviously, as a medical school, we offer the MD degree, but we also offer master's and PhD programs, which really focus, can be focused or interdisciplinary. We have a model in the biomedical sciences where you can be um, focused very specifically in a discipline like biochemistry or microbiology. Jen, are you able to advance the slide one more? Just so people can see. Thank you. Um, so you can see the list, these bullet pointed lists of the various disciplines that are represented in the biomedical sciences. Um, so you can be really focused with a master's degree in one of those areas or a PhD in one of those areas, or you can pursue a more interdisciplinary type of program. Um, some of you who are joining us today may be thinking about medical school. Um, and if you are going to apply, you of course know how competitive the process is. And we do offer an interdisciplinary master's degree that's a really good sort of next step for a student who's just coming out of their undergrad career, who may need to sort of strengthen some areas in their application academically. Um, and this master's program is a really good way for students to prepare for that next step and to improve their chances of medical school admission. We also, as you can see, have a few combined MD programs too. We have offer MD PhD, um, the MD MBA, and MD Masters of Public Health. So you do have the opportunity to kind of combine those programs if you have interest in more than, in sort of a, a variety maybe of healthcare fields, or you want to get that administrative experience with the MBA. Um, as I mentioned, we are located in downtown Buffalo now on the Buffalo Niagara Medical Campus. Uh, we moved into a new facility about three years ago. Um, it's fantastic, it's huge, it's state of the art. Unfortunately, we're not all there as much as we normally would be right now, um, but it is a really fantastic place for our students to train. And we do have our medical students and our biomedical sciences students working in labs, doing their gross anatomy classes in person, obviously with precautions in place, um, but it, it's a really fantastic place to train. And I think with that, I will turn it over to my colleague from Roswell Park. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Adam Casalis. Um, I'm the uh, interim associate dean for the Roswell Park Graduate Division. And uh, a little bit of background on what Roswell Park Comprehensive Cancer Center is. We were established back in 1898 as our country's first um, cancer center of its kind that brings together physicians and scientists with uh, one mission to understand, prevent, and cure cancer. Behind me, you see what our hospital looks like. This is actually a virtual um, screen behind me, but that gives you a sense. And we are down on the Buffalo Niagara Medical Campus, uh, just about a five minute walk away from the UB Medical School. Interesting, our relationship with the University of Buffalo is we are a standalone uh, cancer center where we are taking care of patients and doing research um, that matters in the uh, delivery of improved and enhanced patient care. But our students partnered with UB are, are UB students. So you are working down on our, our Roswell Park campus, doing your graduate school training in the very unique setting of translational uh, research environment. So everything you're doing either at the computer, if you're in a uh, in, uh, cancer prevention program or biostatistics program or at the lab bench, if you're in one of our molecular biology, cancer genetics or uh, uh, cell biology or immunology programs, all the work that you're doing in some way is going to impact a patient. When we look at students uh, for applications to our program, we're looking through a wide range of students, backgrounds in mathematics, chemistry, psychology, biology, physics, who all share one mission, and that is to, again, cure cancer. Um, the program itself at Roswell Park is a scholarly community of graduate students. So uh, we have about 90 uh, students here, PhD and master's students, all together on a campus. They have come up with their own professional development affinity groups that are supported by our office, the Department of Educational Affairs. And so um, these affinity groups, uh, students have come up with 
uh, uh, teaching group. So they teach our students in the summer uh, research program, learn some teaching skills. Uh, other types of, um, of affinity groups that they've developed are um, uh, policy uh, groups, um, some grant writing groups, some health and wellness groups. So that extends the, the work that they're doing from the research, um, uh, from the research activities. There's also grants available to students from our office to go out and extend their uh, education further and do some professional development. So students can apply for these grants, uh, institutional grants at Roswell to go out and, and do their own uh, professional development. Um, our alumni are varied in, the, in, in their successes of where they've gone. Um, some have gone off into uh, teaching roles, running their own research uh, laboratories. Uh, I can count about uh, 15 or so who have stayed on and actually are at different phases in their careers at Roswell Park, including, including faculty uh, positions right here at Roswell. And uh, just some uh, housekeeping details. Applications will be due uh, January 6th, and there's some information there that we'll provide to you at the end if you want to reach out and uh, ask us a little bit more about uh, the program. By the way, for those of you not from Buffalo, it's about 70 degrees outside. It is September. We've had a great warm summer and the Buffalo Bills are 2-0, and oh, so a couple selling points for our, our city of Buffalo. Thank you. All right, perfect. Uh, my name is Luke Ramey. Uh, I oversee uh, the professional admissions programs here uh, at the School of Dental Medicine. Um, so here at the, the dental school, we've been around for one of the oldest schools in the country over 125 years. Um, we offer a number of different degrees. Uh, most popular, probably what you think of, is that Doctor of Dental Surgery, the DDS. Uh, we also have an international dentist program for foreign trained dentists who look to also gain that degree, PhD options, master's options, advanced certificate options as well um, as micro-credentials. Um, micro-credentials are, are pretty unique as an example, you know, in your D4 year here, uh, you could have the opportunity to work with other healthcare students from medicine, pharmacy, nursing, social work um, to create a total patient treatment plan. And you can earn a micro credential at that point that would be permanently attached to your transcripts. Uh, we're also currently starting an MS program um, in oral sciences uh, for an enhanced curriculum that could lead to um, admission into the DDS program. Uh, within that program, you can basically start uh, the MS, take courses in the DDS track, and then your second year of the program, uh, complete your research while joining the, the D1 class. Uh, so other things to keep in mind with the dental school, uh, real innovative curriculum. Uh, we begin you know, with a, a pretty thorough, uh, I guess, curriculum where you're, you're taking gross anatomy with the medical school, uh, you're moving into our clinic experience. Students begin patient care early in our DDS program. Um, clinic training begins in your first year in our preclinic simulation lab. Um, in your second year, um, in the spring semester, you work closely um, about three and a half days a week in the clinic. Um, right now, our clinics are undergoing a $35 million renovation, so it's a pretty exciting time for our students uh, and faculty here at this point. Um, also really important to us is community engagement. Uh, you'll have the opportunity to give back to the community, um, not only around the city of Buffalo, uh, but throughout the world. Um, so Julie mentioned uh, the remote area medical trips that our students participate in. Um, that's within the US as well as international trips. We've had students in Sierra Leone, Dominican Republic, a number of other places uh, where you can gain valuable experience while also giving back to the community. Uh, real quick, I'd like to also go over some of the changes within our DDS admissions process. Uh, we do have a national application, uh, so students would be applying through the American Dental Education Association and submitting that national application for us to take a look at here at UB. Um, that runs from about the middle of June through January 25th of 2021. Uh, we're being pretty flexible this year in regards to some of our requirements that would normally be a bit more strict. Um, so for example, any courses that are impacted by the pandemic that you needed to take um, online as opposed to in person in regards to you know, science prerequisites, we're accepting those. We realize that shadowing hours right now have been impacted. So 
being flexible with the number of hours. A lot of dental offices aren't allowing you know, students to come in and observe at this point in time. And we also realize that DAT schedules have been impacted nationwide also. So, um, you know, if, if your DAT is delayed, don't worry, just let us know. Uh, we're working with students and um, we're planning on having additional interview dates later on in our admission cycle to kind of make up for any of the delays caused by the pandemic this year. Uh, with that, our interviews have also moved to an all virtual environment. Uh, we're trying to give students the the best experience possible with those virtual interviews. So we've created, you know, a student virtual tour that, that is entirely run by our, our students. Um, they're our best resource, so we try to take advantage of that. Uh, many of you, if you are interested in dentistry, may have seen um, the Dental Impressions Instagram page. Check that out if you haven't. Um, it's one of our D4 students, he does great work. Uh, he also was very instrumental in creating a lot of the videos that we're using as part of our interview day. So. Uh, we're excited about that. Um, with that, um, if there's any questions at the end, more than happy to answer those for anybody here, uh, but I will turn it over to uh, Julie again in the School of Nursing. Hi, my name again is uh, Julie Kimprol. I work in the School of Nursing and I work with our applicants and our students in our program. So I know, um, many people who are interested in health disciplines, uh, many of our students who find themselves entering nursing really are the ones that are really thriving that patient interaction, really being at the forefront of care. And if you do see yourself interested in those roles, um, the UB School of Nursing is a great place. Just some general points of pride is um, we are really proud to be ranked in the top 20% of nursing schools across the United States. Our reputation within Western New York and the caliber of our students um, just in the job market, I believe is very strong. We also wanna make sure that you know the students that we admit and graduate um, are successful. And so we are really proud of our NCLEX board pass rates. And so we really prepare them from day one to not only um, graduate, but also to become a nurse. So one of the programs that you guys might be interested in would be our accelerated bachelor's in science and nursing. This is specifically designed for people who have a bachelor's degree in a field outside of nursing. There are nine very specific uh, prerequisite courses. Um, many of our students who kind of find themselves interested in this program typically are able to do many of these courses um, either at their local community college, at UB, or if they need any assistance finding these courses online, uh, we'd be happy to work with them. Um, students typically work on a few of those courses and will submit the application. Uh, the great thing about our Accelerate program too is that it is a one-year program. So that means that you start in May and you would graduate the following year in May with your second bachelor's degree in nursing, which would allow you to take the NCLEX exam and receive your RN license. I think that really uh, attracts many of our students. We have students who are parents who are, um, you know, juggling different things and doing this program and really being able to maybe take that time off to actually do a complete change of careers. So if that is something of interest to you, um, we do have monthly information sessions. Uh, we do transcript evaluations, as well as if anybody has any questions or wants to speak here from our current students, um, they typically attend our monthly session. Another important thing about nursing is that once you enter the field of nursing, um, many of our students also have a long-term career goal and they see their role maybe going beyond a nurse by the bedside. So our accelerated program intertwines one graduate course into the curriculum. So you would be getting your second bachelor's degree but also earning graduate credit. So once you complete your bachelor's degree, um, the UB School of Nursing has several graduate programs to become a nurse practitioner or a nurse anesthetist. And this is, will give you the opportunity to possibly see patients individually, have prescriptive authority, and even thinking about my own primary care experience or the primary care experience of my, um, my children. Um, oftentimes I'll see on the walls in their office, not just MD, but NP. And so you really see that growth of uh, nurse practitioners providing many of those primary care roles. So 
that is really also one of the great kind of flexibility about nursing is once you become a nurse, uh, work as an RN, you can continue on and become a nurse practitioner. We have many students go on after they finish their bachelor's degree, they go on to work as an RN and they will continue on into our DNP program. We do offer an early assurance track where students with a strong GPA, we will waive the GRE score and they can start our DMB program on a part-time basis. So as they continue to learn and build skills as a new working nurse, they also will work towards completing their Doctor of Nursing practice. So that is also a great opportunity. So if anybody wants to learn more, not only about becoming a nurse, but about continuing on that role of becoming a nurse practitioner, um, the UB School of Nursing would be a great place to complete both of those areas. Um, admission is competitive, so we do encourage students to put together a strong application. Um, if anybody has any questions, they're welcome to contact me. Uh, we don't do, we've always accepted online courses um, with our application for prerequisites as well as labs, so there wouldn't really be any impact with if there was any adjustment in your courses. Um, we don't do uh, letters of recommendation. Most of our our admission is going to be based on your uh, essay question, a video response, your resume, and your GPA. Um, so thank you guys again, and if you have any more questions, um, feel free to contact me. I put my contact information on the bottom or um, attend one of my, our, my monthly sessions. All right, thank you, and I think I'll pass it on to public health. Oh, sorry, pharmacy. That's okay. We, we, look, we look the same, a lot of P's and S's and H's. So, uh, so I'm Jennifer Rosenberg. Again, I'm one of the associate deans in the UB School of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences. Thank you again. Um, I should have mentioned at the beginning, we will take a Q&A chat at the end, so you'll have plenty of time to ask us questions once we are done, um, which will be shortly. So let me tell you a little bit about the UB School of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences. Um, uh, similar to uh, some of my other colleagues, our school has been around for um, over 130 years, um, yet we are an innovative um, school that is uh, well positioned for change. So we don't do things um, the same old way just because. Um, with that, uh, we have recently ranked as the number 14th school um, in the United States, so the top 15 among um, over 140 pharmacy schools, um, and we are the number one ranked school of pharmacy in New York State. Um, we are super proud of that. It is a true, you know, tribute to our um, outstanding faculty, our current students, our graduates, our faculty and staff. Um, so again, very exciting. In addition, our pharmaceutical sciences programs, so we have bachelor's, master's, and PhD programs, that program is one of the top programs in the world. Um, so you're in good hands um, at the UV School of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences. I just want to sort of quickly review our degrees and our processes. Right now, the applications are open for fall 2021, both for our PharmD program, which is listed here, and then for our pharmaceutical sciences programs, which are all listed at the bottom. Again, um, nuts and bolts are there. They're also on our website, happy to take questions. Similar to some of my colleagues, dental and other programs, we do have flexibility in the process, you know, certainly for this year, you know, just given all the constraints that are there. So again, if you have a question, feel free to ask. We welcome your application. We review fairly quickly and we are interviewing virtually as well. Just some high level takeaways from our school, just some things I'd like you to leave with. Um, of our dual degrees listed below, if you see pharmacy degrees, we have 100% acceptance rate to all of our dual degrees. So our pharmacy students are always admitted um, into our dual programs, which is a great testament again to their um, prowess and their um, future um, as you know, combined degree students. Um, a couple of reasons why you would wanna choose our program. Certainly our graduates, our alumni, um, they are um, outstanding and they are uh, very concerned with maintaining the value and the integrity of their PharmD and pharmaceutical sciences degrees. They're very involved in the admissions process, the mentoring process, the precepting process. So again, um, you have sort of a great family um, of graduates um, before you even start. Um, as I mentioned earlier, um, the interprofessional education is really a key, um, really a key win for our school and with our academic health science center partners. Um, it is a real, um, it's a really, uh, it's, it's a bright spot for our students um, among the many things that they get to do with their, both their regular coursework and their experiential education. The interprofessional work is really um, a real win and it allows our students to be very well poised um, to get their choice of jobs um, when they graduate. 
Um, with that, um, another takeaway is that our students can be any type of pharmacist when they graduate and any type of pharmacist throughout their career. So a community pharmacist, a clinical pharmacist, a researcher, um, industry, specialty pharmacy, you name it. So you are trained as a pharmacy student um, to graduate and move in and among different fields of pharmacy and pharmaceutical sciences um, in your career. So again, our applications are open. Um, we welcome your, your questions um, and I'm gonna hand it over to my colleague um, for now. Thanks. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Brian Patrick Bond. I work with the School of Public Health and Health Professions, and I assist our applicants who are applying for our graduate and professional programs. Uh, thank you again so, so much for joining us. The University at Buffalo's School of Public Health and Health Professions is one of only a few schools across the country that includes health-related professions as an essential component of the public health education and research system. This allows our students within the biostatistics, community health and health behavior, epidemiology, environmental health, exercise and nutrition sciences, and rehabilitation science departments to be uniquely situated to advance the health and well-being of populations and communities. Our students pursuing our graduate and professional degree programs will focus on practicing research-based approaches to prepare in the public health field, to prepare to be practitioners in the health professions, to prepare to be educators and to be researchers. And we'll also be providing services to communities locally here in Western New York and around the globe. The School of Public Health and Health Professions is recognized as being one of the top schools of public health in the country, ranked the highest in Western New York. Uh, and many of our graduates in our public health and health profession programs have achieved 100% job uh, and employment rates within a few months of graduation over repeated years. And we're offering programs that attract students from many academic and career backgrounds. I know many of you who are on the call today are exploring opportunities to study medicine, to study pharmacy, social work, and other health profession and healthcare options. And I encourage you to, as you explore those options, to also think about combining that program with an MPH uh, dual degree, dual profession program option. Because we're with the Academic Health Center here at UB, we have many kind of partnerships that allow students to, along with your degree study in another school, to be able to take classes and add a public health and explore that curriculum alongside your uh, other degree study. These topics are hugely important in public health today, and we learn about the long-term effects of COVID-19 and the underlying health inequalities that have always existed but have been made more visible with the current uh, situation going on. Uh, this includes opportunities to do a combined Master of Public Health with a Doctor of Medicine degree, a combined Master of Public Health with a Master of Social Work, uh, a combined degree with a Doctor of Pharmacy, and many others such as Law, urban planning, doctor of physical therapy, and MBA degrees you can all combine with the Master of Public Health. In addition, there are opportunities for students within the Academic Health Center to pursue our Public Health Advanced Certificate Program, which is five graduate level classes, or enroll into a two-class micro-credential in health inequalities. Second, I'd, secondly, I'd like to share a mix of our public health and health profession programs. You can see them on our slide here. Uh, and those include programs such as athletic training, physical therapy, occupational therapy, dietetics with a clinical nutrition master's degree. And on the public health side, we offer MA, MS, MPH, and PhD level programs in subjects such as biostatistics, community health and health behavior, exercise science, nutrition science, epidemiology, environmental health, health services administration, and rehabilitation science. In the last two years, we've also begun to offer an online Master of Public Health program and an online Health Advanced Graduate Certificate curriculum. So no matter where you go in the country, you can still study these very, very important public health issues on your time and your schedule through an online program. The world is ready for the next generation of public health and health profession specialists. We welcome you to join our next cohort of epidemiologists, health educators, athletic trainers, Dana analysts, physical and occupational therapists, researchers, behavioral specialists, uh, and more with the School of Public Health 
and health professions. Uh, and next I'll turn it over to my colleague in social work. Hi everybody, my name is Lauren McGowan. I'm the Director of Recruitment and Admissions for the UB School of Social Work. So some of you may be thinking, hey, how does social work relate to healthcare and health professions? Um, but what not everybody realizes is that there are many, many social workers who work within the healthcare system, whether it be coordinating care for patients after they leave the hospital or actually providing counseling and psychotherapy um, to to mental health patients um, in an inpatient or outpatient setting. Um, among many, many other roles, they also work on healthcare policy and they deal with issues regarding um, uh, access to healthcare and inequalities within the healthcare system. Um, so social workers are really present um, in, in the healthcare setting and they do work with many different populations, um, some of which are medical patients. But the interesting thing is that social workers tend to take a little bit of a different approach. So social workers are usually working on solving more mental, uh, emotional, behavioral issues with individuals rather than focusing on physical ailments. So it's a little bit of a different approach. It's a little bit of a different career path. Um, but a, a good majority of people who work as counselors or therapists actually have their degree in social work and they, they work as licensed clinical social workers. So they're doing that clinical work. Um, and that's something that not, not everybody realizes is that they are really trained as social workers. Um, Social work might be a good fit or a good option for people who maybe uh, really want to be in a helping profession. You really like working with people one-on-one. Um, -on -one. You want to, uh, you care about, you know, uh, access to health care. You care about um, people's mental, physical well-being. Um, but maybe you don't love chemistry or maybe you really struggled with anatomy and physiology and some of those hard sciences. Um, social work is more of a social science. So again, it takes a little bit of a different approach and it really attracts people with different strengths um, than those pursuing some of the harder science healthcare professions. So we have a couple of different options at the UB School of Social Work. Um, we have only graduate, we only offer graduate level social work programs. So we have a master's degree in social work, um, which is our MSW program. And then we also have two doctoral programs, um, a PhD and a DSW in social welfare. And we do have many dual degree options. So as my colleague Brian mentioned, we do have an MPH MSW. Um, so you can combine that with the public health uh, degree, as well as some others with the School of Law and the School of Management. Um, as well. So a couple of unique things about us. We are ranked within the top 10% of CSWE accredited social work programs in the country by US News and World Report. And I do want to mention that's something that you've heard a lot today is that, and that's the great thing about having this academic health center is that you're not benefiting from just the school that you are taking classes in being really highly regarded, but pretty much all of the schools at UB um, are really, have really been individually recognized as being really excellent. Um, and so that's something that our students get to take advantage of. Um, so I did want to kind of highlight that since it is, I think, something that we're all sort of proud of um, for each of our units, respectively. Um, in addition to that, we have sort of a unique curriculum for our MSW program. We have something called a trauma-informed and human rights perspective. And so, as you may know, um, trauma really plays a large impact, not only in the lives of individuals, um, but also in our society as a whole. Um, and certainly what's happening right now surrounding COVID is causing a lot of trauma for people in different ways, um, you know, that's different than normal. Um, so, so this is something that we have infused throughout our curriculum uh, because we want to make sure that our, our social work students know how to empathetically and effectively help people that have experienced prior trauma and not re-traumatize them and to also recognize and fight against human rights violations as well. Um, so our students are really trained not only to provide trauma-focused services and, um, and use those skills with individuals, but also to think about new and different ways to create safe spaces within the, within the agencies that they work for. Um, and it really makes a difference with how you design um, how your agency functions, how you deliver services to your clients and your patients. Um, and it really transforms the way that you deliver healthcare um, to people when you, when you implement this trauma-informed perspective. So our students are really positioned to be leaders um, within the spaces they're working in and really provide that unique point of view to hopefully make safer spaces, more trauma-informed spaces where people really feel comfortable, not just clients, but also the people who work at the agency as well. 
well. A trauma-informed lens benefits everyone. Um, so that's something that's really unique about our program. And the other great thing is, is a couple of my colleagues mentioned, um, here in Buffalo, we have some really great partnerships within our local community. Um, Buffalo is a wonderful place to live and to work and to be a student um, because we have so many diverse agencies here that we have students go to um, not only volunteer um, and get practice hours, but do internships, do research projects. Um, so Buffalo is a really great place and we have some really strong partnerships within our community community um, in terms of social work for field placements, which is the intensive internship that social work students do. But again, for all of our different units, we have those really strong connections that our students really benefit from. And so hopefully, if you haven't been to Buffalo, um, consider visiting. It's really wonderful here. Um, I think probably all of us on the call could probably tell you about how great Buffalo is. Um, and it's also very affordable to live here as well, which is a bonus um, compared to a lot of other major cities. So, um, so really, our location, I think, is also a really great benefit to to all of our students that being said if you don't want to come to buffalo we do also have an online msw program as well um, which is accessible from anywhere in the country and we've had students from canada um, and some other countries enroll as well so um, that's my quick overview of social work um, and again i'm going to turn it back over to everybody and i think it's time for answering questions great thanks lauren um, and thanks everybody. Um, so now is a great time um, to ask uh, questions and I'm gonna, um, let's see if I can pop into the chat. I think we had one. Um, oh, that was a comment from Brian. So everybody, um, we are still um, in sort of screen share mode. I can uh, leave this information up as context, but if you have questions, um, we are here. Um, now's a great time to pop them in um, to the chat. Uh, we are happy to answer any questions for you. I, I just had to unmute myself. Hi, Janae. Um, yes, we, so at UB, we don't have a large post back program for the MD program like you might see at some schools, but we do identify every year when the, uh, we review our applicant pool, we will identify a small number of students that we will invite to participate in our post back program, but it's not something that's just an open application that anyone can apply for. We have a, a really small capacity for this program. Um, but it is something that if you do apply to medical school and you're not a successful applicant now, but they feel like you have really strong potential, then they may invite you to, to um, join the post back as an option. So that's something our medical admissions office would be in touch with you about if, if they felt you were a good candidate for that. Thanks. I see a quick question about um, explaining the PharmD program. Um, sure. Um, I'll do a quick high level and then maybe I can take you, um, Angie, on the side um, if you have further questions. Um, so um, quickly, the PharmD program is a four-year program. Um, it is a graduate professional program. Students enter in after they finish two years of prerequisites. Um, you don't need a bachelor's degree, although you can have one. Um, pharmacy is um, three years of sort of didactic um, in-person or virtual courses right now. Um, kind of married with um, uh, uh, quite a few hundred hours of experiential education, um, introductory practice experiences, advanced rotations. We really learn what type of pharmacist you'd like to be. Um, and then students graduate um, and go off into many, many different fields. Um, the process um, to get there, you apply through a national application called FarmCast, which is similar to many of our other applications. Um, and that's sort of um, the entryway into um, the program, if that helps. The next question was about the School of Dental Medicine and what is the earliest year that you can apply. Um, most of our students apply at the conclusion of their junior year and go through the interview process during their, their senior year. Uh, we do have an early assurance application as well um, where you can apply at the conclusion of your, your sophomore year. Um, you don't need to have a DAT at that point in time, but you need to have most of the prerequisites completed um, and we expect um, a minimum of a 3.5 GPA at that point in time for cumulative and science. And um, it is a, a bit more of a competitive, rigorous uh, process for the early assurance program. Um, Luke, before you go, I think we have one more dental question and then maybe Beth will come back to you. I see two medical questions. So the next question a little sure. further down, Luke, is um, what does the clinical care look like currently? Um, what does the clinic look like currently with COVID? So what do classes and clinic care look like currently with COVID? Perfect, okay. So 
here at the dental school, all of our didactic courses have moved to a, a virtual format. Um, at this point, that was mainly done to really support the clinic operation. Um, the clinics are up and running, um, I guess, full capacity. Uh, we do have social distancing, um, patient screening, PPE uh, requirements for all of our students, as well as our faculty members that are working in the clinic. Uh, we've also added evening clinic hours so that we can space out patients. Um, that's something that is currently four nights a week. Um, all of our pre-clinic operations are also happening in person. So for our D1 and D2 students who spend a lot of time in the pre-clinic, uh, we've split our classes in half um, to where uh, they're always, again, spread out in that space, but it is very important to still have the hands-on training as part of uh, the dental school curriculum. So the hands-on pieces are all still taking place in person. The clinic is operating um, with minimal restrictions, just really the social distancing and all of our didactic courses are currently uh, being taught online. Okay, I'll answer. It looks like there were a couple of MD questions, so I'll jump in here to answer these. First for Shanice about our interdisciplinary master's program. Um, so this program is a three semester program and you're getting an MS uh, in natural sciences, basically. So it's very flexible. Um, there are a certain core number of uh, required courses, but you have quite a bit of flexibility to choose electives throughout the breadth of biomedical sciences coursework that, coursework that we offer. So it really gives you quite a bit of choice in the courses that you'll take to kind of customize this and make it fit your interests. Um, at the end of the three semesters, you would complete a capstone project. So this is not a thesis-based master's. Um, you know, research can be a component of this master's degree if you have an interest in that area, but it's not going to be as intensive a research program as you might find in one of our traditional MS programs that would require a thesis. Um, and we have a seminar course built into that program that you take every semester that gives you exposure to the various seminars. Um, that we have in the medical school, including basic science ones and things like biochemistry and microbiology, pharmacology, but also in Grand Rounds, which is more clinically um, focused seminars that physicians will go to to tackle certain problems within their field, whether it be surgery or biomedical informatics or whatever it is. So you, you really can get some clinical exposure as well. And we think being on the medical campus in this translational environment that we're in also benefits students. So we certainly encourage you to apply and the application is open now for fall of 2021. Um, and then Hanson, to your question about the interview schedule for MD, we are not delayed, believe it or not, but we are virtual. Um, we traditionally start our MD interviews in August every year and we started in August this year for fall of 2021. So our committee has been reviewing applications and interviewing students. We don't have interview days in the same way that we would have in the past. Um, we, we, we're, our approach is really to sort of have a week of, of interviews that students will do with our committee members and then at the end of that week, that's when our admissions committee will kind of look at all of the interview information together to make a decision about what next steps might be for that applicant. Great. I think there were um, maybe Lauren a question for you and then another dental question, if you don't mind, we do it that way. And we can also answer questions in the chat as well. Yeah, I was say I'm chatting with Ashia separately. So Okay, great. I'm answering okay. All right. Uh, Luke, you wanna maybe pop in? I think there was one more other question there. Sure. So I answer, Hallie, I answered your question in the chat in regards to the DAT time frame. And then the other question was from Brandon. Uh, yes, they are built into the curriculum. We have um, I guess clinic management courses built in. Uh, they're taught by a combination of dentists who have clinic management experience as well as um, attorneys um, that help dentists with that process. So it is something that's built into the standard DBS curriculum. Got it. Just seeing if there are any questions that I might be missing. Let's see, one more dental question, um, anything? Just checking to see if I'm missing any of the chat questions. Okay, I see the next dental question. All right, getting there. there. <laughs> no. yep. um, so for our, it's about orthodontic certification. So what we offer to our students in their D4 year um, is that you can, um, as long as you're doing well in your coursework, you can do, um, I guess, 
minors uh, at that point in time. So that would be something that you could take a look at, um, spend more time in the clinic in that area, work with faculty in that area. Um, and that has, I guess that goes for a number of different specialties as well. But during the D4 year, you can uh, do a minor in the specialty areas before you know, potentially looking at a residency program in that area. I saw a question for, um, from uh, Monica about opportunities for medical students to do research at Roswell Park and clinical exposure. I'll ask my colleague uh, Beth also to jump in if I miss anything, but uh, medical students do, do have the opportunity to do rotations in uh, oncology clinics at Roswell, to do some elective research at Roswell. And we also have a summer research experience program for first year medical students offering um, um, mostly UB medical students and students from around the country, the opportunity to come onto our campus for eight weeks in the summer after their first year of, of medical school and get a very immersive and in-depth uh, experience in doing uh, research. Hope that answers your question. If you have follow-ups, please let us know. Beth, did I miss anything? No, I don't think so. The only thing I'll add is just that, yeah, research is an important thing that we encourage our medical students to um, take advantage of if they can get those opportunities. And there are a lot of opportunities, including what Adam has already talked about, um, as well as in our labs within the medical school as well. Um, we have research days for our students, for our medical students. There's another summer research uh, experience that focuses on first year medical students as well, um, that focuses in translational medicine. So really, if you have an interest in that, you could certainly take advantage of that in our medical program, for sure. Beth, I think you have a couple of questions in there, if you can see them, and if you're able to see. I think you're muted. No, one second. Apologies. <laughs> Um, Janae, global health. Yes, uh, there definitely are options in that area as well. We have a, actually a global health um, office that helps place students. So we have medical students going to Haiti, going overseas to other countries overseas, as well as within the U.S. So that's a big part of our community service mission. So those opportunities would definitely be there for you. And Ruben, in terms of adapting to the pandemic, um, we have sort of a mix of uh, distant classes, remote classes, and in-person classes. Um, the things that are in person are going to be the things where you really need that hands-on experience, like gross anatomy um, and some of the sem smaller seminar courses. Um, but if it's a standard lecture course, that's going to be probably offered online at this point. Um, and we do record those as well, which actually was true even before the pandemic, that all of those lectures have always been recorded for medical students so they could refer back to them. So that continues, so you would have those to refer to even if you miss the, the particular class time. Um, and as far as telehealth goes, uh, yes, we, I believe that our MD students are also seeing like practice standardized patients remotely now as well in the pandemic. So we've adjusted to that. We obviously have to meet the same uh, accreditation requirements we always have, so we just have to be a little more flexible in the way that we're meeting that. Um, and I think I there was see. another dental question. Oh, go ahead. Um, so Abby asked if I could explain the MS and oral sciences program and how that works in transition to the dental school. Um, so that's an enhanced curriculum where essentially you would start the MS program in oral sciences in the fall. Um, during that fall semester is when you would also be looking at applying to the dental school. Uh, but you would have the opportunity through that curriculum to take um, a few D1 courses uh, with current dental students. Um, from there, your second year in the program, um, after you would go through our admissions process for the DDS, um, if you're approved, you join the D1 class and you take your remaining D1 courses and in place of those that um, you took during the first year of the MS, uh, you would do your research thesis in the oral sciences. So this is a good program uh, for a couple of reasons. One, if you would just want to improve your profile for applying to dental school, or if you have um, a big interest in uh, research, this is a good opportunity to start research very early on in your uh, dental school curriculum. Okay, I think we have another, oh, go ahead. 
I think there's just one quick nursing question. Oh, great. Um, okay. Regarding our accelerated program, um, typically students can apply their senior year in college. Um, students will typically apply in the fall as long as they have four prereqs met already. So if they were kind of doing um, some applied science classes like anatomy, physiology, chemistry, they typically will be able to apply. The remaining prereqs will just have to be completed before our program starts. And it starts in mid-May. So the students that we have that are applying that are graduating their senior year, oftentimes they are walking across stage on Saturday and starting our program like the following Monday. Great, thank you. Um, I'm just gonna take a quick, uh, this is a good everyone question, John. Um, the answer to your um, question about rotation. So um, our students do um, uh, experiential rotations in their second year and their third year. And these are introductory practice experiences that they do um, in partnership with our school and with an office that uh, works with them to set these up. Your fourth year, the P4 year in pharmacy school is a rotational year. So you do six, six week rotations to inpatient, to outpatient, to other. Um, and these are done, um, John, in advance. Um, you prepare for these rotations and you sort of sign up for these rotations um, in advance of your P4 year. We partner with you um, to um, guide you in terms of making those choices. And then you are um, assigned through sort of a process um, what really turns out to be uh, most students' top choices. Um, they could be local here in Buffalo, um, New York State, any state. We have international rotations. So it's pretty common that most students um, land or attain the um, experiences that they want. We have many, many pharmaceutical industry partnerships here in the Western New York area, Buffalo, Rochester, and surrounding areas. I hope that answers your question. You can certainly feel free to um, private chat me if you have further questions about that. We have one more. Do we get in the DDS question on the side or is that an everyone question? I think we have one more um, question about the master's programs. Oops. All right. Okay. Um, all right. So I'm looking at this one now. Sorry, I was typing mm -hmm. this. Are any restrictions? So we partner mostly with that MBA program here at UB. Um, as far as other work within the DDS, the curriculum is fairly intense. So finding anything else in regards to another master's is somewhat difficult, um, but we would work with students if there's something outside of there, but the MBA is the one that is um, a bit more common. Great, thank you. Um, we're happy to take a few more questions. If not, um, we can certainly have you email um, each of the respective emails. Um, on the slide. Um, we're happy to um, answer them. Um, again, um, I, I see one more question. Hold on one second. Um, so uh, quickly, uh, for about the dual degrees in pharmacy. Um, that's a great question, the PharmD PhD. Um, that's our longest one um, in the nicest way. Um, but the Basically what happens is um, you, do, you start the PharmD program and after your first professional year for any of the dual programs, you would then um, indicate your interest in one of the dual programs and we would work with you on moving into one of the master's programs after your first or second year in the pharmacy program. For the PhD, you would first do the PharmD MS, um, likely in pharmaceutical sciences. And uh, then you would then see how that goes and how you like it and how it really goes for you. And then once you finish the PharmD, you would then move into the PhD program. The PhD is fully funded. Um, if I had to answer a number question, I would say five years for the PharmD MS and then another four to six years for the PhD, um, realistically, if that makes sense. I think it looks like we're answering uh, maybe questions over chat. So um, a high level, we will uh, make a recording of this presentation um, and we will send it out to everybody that attended and registered. Um, I think if there are no, I just wanna make sure we didn't miss any questions. If we didn't, um, please feel free to email us. Um, also, if we missed a question, please throw it up in the chat again quickly if you need. Um, Thank you um, to everybody for joining us today. We are so thrilled um, to have so many students um, participate. Um, again, um, we wish you a lot of luck and thank you for your interest and wish you well. We'll hang out here another two or three minutes. If not, 
And we will hope to see you guys and we look forward to receiving your applications. Thanks again and thanks to my colleagues. Um, if there's any last comments that you'd like to make, please feel free to jump in.